Hi there, it's Professor Murray, and I have a short lecture on PLC safety. Let's first take a look at what's in the textbook. We've got chapters 14, 15, and 17, and they discuss risk assessment and safety, safety devices, and lockout tagout. They're all really good topics, really important stuff, but the way it's presented is not really well linked to PLC programming. What do we need to know? There's three categories that I want you to be familiar with. One is fail safe. The second is redundancy. And the third is failure response. Fail safe. It doesn't mean that equipment's never going to fail. That would be great, but things always do fail. What it does mean is that when there's a failure, the equipment will naturally go into a safe condition. For example, if you have a, a table saw in your garage and the power fails, if that table saw just has a physical switch where you turn it up to turn it on, then when the power comes back on, that table saw is going to come back on all by itself. That is not a fail-safe condition. There's some questions you have to ask yourself when you're doing your programming, such as, should you use a switch to control a motor? If you set a switch to on position, should that directly control the motor, or should that latch a contact inside your logic, and that contact has to be relatched every time for that motor to start? In some cases you want that, like with a table saw. A table saw should not start on power up if the switch is on. But maybe a, a sump pump, something that pumps out water from a, from a crawl space. A sump pump you want to be able to come on automatically. So it depends on what you're controlling. Another question you have to ask yourself is, if you have a power failure or you hit your e-stop, should that automatically release all the power in the system? If you have a pressurized tank, should you release the pressure from that tank? Or should you just close the valves and lock that tank down? There's no one answer fits all. You have to consider your application and think about what should happen on a failure. Okay, that's fail safe. Next is redundancy. And this one's pretty short and simple. Essentially, anytime you have a sensor that if the sensor fails, it could lead to an unsafe condition, then you have to put in a backup sensor. And that's pretty well mandatory. If one sensor failure can lead to an unsafe condition, you have to have a backup sensor. So pretty straightforward. The last one is one that we haven't talked about before. Not very much anyway. It's called failure response. E-stops have been used on machines for many, many years. And typically an e-stop will just shut a PLC down. You hit the e-stop, the PLC goes dead, everything stops. And that was thought to be a good safe condition or a good safe setup. There's much more modern designs now where a failure or an emergency will lead to some other system taking over control of the equipment and moving the equipment into a, a safe condition. Allen Bradley has a complete series of PLCs that are related to the control logics. They're called safeguard PLCs. And actually you can even put a safeguard module in a control logics PLC to have that PLC do both. The whole topic of emergency shutdown and failure response is covered very nicely in this video. And there's a link to YouTube to show you where that video is. So rather than me explaining it all, I think this person does a very good job of explaining it in the context of an oil and gas industry. So that's very relevant to us in Bakersfield. Have a look at the video and take the quiz that I'm going to post on Canvas. And that's all I have for safety. Thanks a lot.